time digging holes in the ground? Uh, <laughs> I spend a fair amount digging holes in the ground. Yeah, uh, or at least overseeing holes being dug, I guess. Renzo Piano, from creative design through completion. This is Joel Salkoff in the third of an exclusive video series for eArchitect UK. In part two, Giorgio Bianchi, who executed Piano's vision for the Morgan, suggested I speak with structural engineer Scott Hughes on excavation details, making it possible to put an auditorium nearly 50 feet underground in New York City. Uh, let's talk about um, uh, the Morgan Library and Museum and how one goes about uh, putting an auditorium underground in Manhattan on Madison Avenue. Could we start on Madison Avenue in the 30s and, and tell me how those holes were dug? Um, sure. Um, so, uh, um, most of the addition that we've we designed with Renzo Piano you know, um, extends to about 50 feet below the sidewalk. Um, and there were two sort of major elements that run down that deep. One is the Madison Avenue Pavilion, below which is the vault that contains a lot of the uh, priceless collection of the Morgan Library. Um, and then over um, just to the northeast of that is that point also extends just about as deep down below sidewalk elevation. So below the sidewalk um, on the site, there was about 15 feet of soil, which is about 35 feet of bedrock, all of which had to be excavated. And how high is the auditorium? Uh, the auditorium is about 40 feet, give or take. 45. 45. Um, so, um, how do you dig into the soil? What is what is involved there? Well, the excavation of the soil is pretty conventional. Um, that was done using this uh, conventional backhoe. Um, what's critical is to support the soil outside our hole that we're digging. So, uh, um, a number were done to um, provide soldier piles and lag and, and use of other um, excavation support means to hold back the soil on the outside of our hole. Um, once we got down to rock... According to the office of the mayor of the city of New York, Manhattan Schist is an extremely strong and durable rock type. Deep below the buildings in busy streets of New York City, beneath the labyrinth of subway tunnels and stations, lies the geologic foundation that makes New York City unique in the world. Clearly the rock is stable enough that it doesn't need to be laterally supported, um, but obviously the challenge there is excavating the rock, especially right up against the existing building. So what was employed was a technique known as line drilling. So a, uh, a series of uh, two to three inch diameter holes are drilled about six inches on center um, to create a fracture plane in the rock and then, um, again, more conventional uh, means can be then used to peel away that rock from against the existing foundations and excavate it. When you say excavated, what kinds of tools do you use to excavate it? Well, uh, once the rock, a fracture plane is created and the rock can be broken up, they really use, they use backhoes and, and um, I mean, for the most part, it's just backhoes. They use some small, um, excavators and uh, things like that, but but it's pretty conventional equipment. How do you break up the bedrock? Well, once you're inside of it, um, the rock was uh, broken up again, uh, really using uh, the same drills to create fracture planes, but it was a less um, precise method than what needed to be used right up against the existing buildings. When I was a child, uh, uh, and Cod Edison was digging up the city. Uh, uh, there were people there with drills uh, uh, going at the uh, sidewalk and so on. Are those the same kind of drills or, or is this much more sophisticated? 
Well, this is, um, it's actually, the technology is pretty sim similar. It's just, it's done at a larger scale. So. The makers of the Morgan. Piano's Italian roots are very key in understanding his work. In Italy, it is easier than in many countries for architects and engineers to be closely involved in the construction process and to become developers. Piano still talks warmly of his youthful visits to his father's building sites where he saw the entire process of building as something of a miraculous event. This is from the Financial Times. Renzo Piano's Morgan was the first of his four New York City projects shown at the end of this video. After meeting the other principals involved in the Morgan, we return to Giorgio Bianchi's perspective as Piano's manager in charge. In the previous two videos, Giorgio Bianchi discussed how Piano formulated the creative vision. Here he continues to describe implementation from his Paris office. Subtitles are used because of audio problems in crossing the Atlantic. Frank Pryle Jr. noted for his restoration work on Grand Central Station, a short walk to the Morgan, is associate partner at Bayer Blinder Bell. Because it is licensed in New York State, Bayer Blinder Bell provided legal status for the project, serving as executive architect. The firm performed restoration and ensured compliance with landmark, fire, and other regulations. Scott Hughes, structural engineer and principal at Robert Sulman Associates, developed and managed safe excavation of the Morgan, two-thirds of which is underground. Hughes, who teaches architecture students at Columbia University, will be returning to this video series to discuss, among other things, uh, virtual reality and building information modeling technology, which provides efficiency and cost savings. Joseph Mizzi, president of Siami, often referred to as the king of New York City construction companies, directed the building of the Morgan. In the next e-architecture video, Mizzi, who also oversaw the exterior restoration of Frank Lloyd Wright's Guggenheim Museum discusses the virtues of close cooperation between architectural firms and construction companies. Now let us go to Paris to Giorgio Bianchi, Renzo Piano's partner in charge of the Morgan. Bianchi was interviewed between flights to Athens where he is involved with a project that integrates sustainability in a dramatically new way. You had originally gone to see the site before um, Renzo uh, had agreed to accept the commission. Yeah. Uh, so part of your role then is to act as a scout. In some way, yes. I mean, in some way, yes. So, so Scott, we, we go, we, we try to understand this. It's, a, it's, a, it's a something that is a, if the project that they propose, it, it could be a good project for us. And so, um, and so it was not really, I mean, we, we, we had a, more or less already decided that we wanted to make this project. But you know, you need to go, you need to understand, you need to see with your eyes. It's not enough to receive a, a picture. And so, you go there, you, 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 have the, the, you, 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 you can breathe the air, but that, uh, you can see the neighbor, you can, you can understand a little bit more. 
sometimes you, you come back scared, sometimes you come back very excited, very happy, sometimes you come back really... But, it, it, but this is the, the fact that we, we use to... Uh, it's our first approach with the project. We need to see the side. Otherwise, uh, it and, doesn't work. And, um, and, when, and when Renzo executed those drawings on the airplane, okay? Uh, yeah. Okay, did he hand them to you and say, do this? Was there a meeting in the uh, conference room? Not, not, uh, Rinsa is not the person that come and, that, uh, and tell you, do this. How does that work then? When, when, when he makes a sketch, uh, when he makes a sketch, uh, then he, he come to a sketch and to discuss with us, to discuss with him. So, uh, and so this is the way he works. There, is, there is nothing that uh, it is not the oraculous. It, it doesn't come with a sketch. I, I, I say, I'm the oraculous here. Now you need to, to execute it. No, there's always a discussion. There is always a workshop. There is always an exchange. And, then and this is thing that is what what makes the difference between uh, in our way to work. That that uh, we, we are a workshop. We work really all together. So and the, the but the discussions took place in Paris. Yeah, because it was in Paris. Yes, and they took place in your in your conference room in Paris. No, probably it took place at my desk, like, uh, because, uh, we, we don't have formal meeting on our day, it's it's coming, it takes a seat, it, 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 uh, uh, it sits uh, around the table and we discuss like that. We never had a, you know, formal discussion around the table with, uh, no, it's always, uh, it's always very, very friendly, very easy. This is what, the way we work. And actually, you can see people are going up and down. People are moving. I'm on my desk. I'm not in, in my conference room. I'm here. Uh, one of the things that really did surprise me, I spent two hours with uh, Frank Pryle Jr. And he took mm -hmm. me on a tour of the Morgan. Yeah. Um, there is uh, some academic literature on uh, architecture, uh, which seems to indicate that it's difficult, if not impossible, to be creative with architecture these days because there are so many rules and there are so many regulations. Um, uh, and uh, I have the impression that, among other things, uh, the primary, but if the primary role of uh, Bender, Bayer, and Bell was to clear those regulations out of the way to make it possible for you to achieve what you wanted to achieve. Is uh, more than the clear, uh, the, and, and put the rule out of the way, was to clarify the rule and explain how the rule and, and, and find the, the, the way to, to, to comply the rules and to understand the rules. That was the way. And then you take the rules and whatever is, uh, is necessary as, as a challenge. And, uh, and, uh, and sometimes the rules give you also some uh, um, point of indication in order to make a better project. I mean, uh, when you, when you, uh, you don't believe that the, you know, the white piece of paper is, uh, is uh, the best way to go because uh, some, uh, some rules, some, uh, some, uh, some, uh, yeah, some, some, uh, everything that is happening around you give you also some input that, uh, that uh, you can use for the, for the better of the project. Well, the, um, I, there were two ways that I observed that yeah. the project was enhanced uh, as a consequence of your reaction to the rules. Mm -hmm. uh, one was the um, transparency, the, the beautiful way with which you handled the fire exit stairs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was a challenge because, you know, uh, the, the, the three pavilion uh, increased uh, quite a lot of the, the uh, number of square feet. And so uh, it was necessary to introduce new stairs. And so we, uh, that was one of the, the most important challenges we have. So we take, uh, uh, we take, we, we, we take the deal. And uh, we we design we design a, 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 a staircase that uh, could become 
an architectural uh, part and uh, uh, item of, of, of the entire project. And so the, the, the design of those stairs that they could be also used by the, the by the people working at the, at the market and that they have this uh, this uh, particularity that they, they have the transparent risers and so you can see through uh, and they are light they are, i think that they, they are quite successful at the end because uh, because they, they don't they, they don't feel something right?